I'll come back. The second phase is called concept generation. It is often believed that new product development starts with a new product idea, but this is not true. First we set up rules and a strategy in phase one, and then we start with the concept generation. When we, when we are talking about new product development, we think of new ways that nobody else has thought of before. Therefore, creativity is a very important skill. A senior manager of P&G, Procter & Gamble, said creativity is the task of making non-obvious connections. Now we want you to find out how creative you are. Use the question on the outside of the chart to determine the four letters of your Myers-Briggs type. Please click pause and give yourself some time to do this test, just for your own. Creative individuals tend to be more in intuitive N rather than sensory S, more perceiving P rather than judging J, more extroverted E rather than introverted I, and more like thinking T rather than feeling. In order to motivate new product development, lots of unique motivation techniques were developed. For example, firms try to offer business locations which attract talented and creative people, like San Francisco, London or Tokyo. It is also important that the firm, firm culture accepts failures and rewards new ideas with trophies and money. The statements which are represented here could easily destroy a fragile idea, so as a good manager you won't say something like this. The following obstacles are very typical during the idea generation process. To many cooks, a small new team works fine, but large companies especially are, are prone to internal competition for power and influence. This results in an unhealthy climate inside a team. The next phen phenomenon is called group thinking. We think we are, we are being creative when in reality we are only coming up with ideas that our group will find acceptable. Remember we, that we are not trying to find the conventional way, but we want to be truly innovative. Another mistake, targeting error. This means that we keep going back to the same simple demographic target. For example, the teenager market. Another ex obstacle is the poor customer knowledge. The popular thinking, the more complex a product is, the better, lead to the next obstacle, complexity. Finally, we have the lack of empathy as a problem during the NPD. Managers are mostly well educated and have a high income. That's why they sometimes do not understand the ordinary customer. After overcoming these obstacles, a product concept can be created. It consists of, th of three parts, the form, technology and benefit or need. Each part is necessary in order to have a good concept of a product. The product concept can be illustrated in this way. This figure is taken from the provided ebook. Only if all parts exist, we have a new product. This can be reached in different ways. The following examples are taken from the e provided ebook. Do you see the examples of product concepts here? The first statement describes the need but no form or technology. It is just a wish, like the cure of cancer. The second statement misses a specific market need as well as a form. The last statement only describes the form, but is neglecting everything else. Now we are going to concentrate, concentrate on ideas. So in order to get in, into the topic, we want you to watch the following video. It is in text, TEDx talk and really interesting in order to see how other people think about getting new ideas. Sometimes easy meets difficult. Have you ever been assigned an easy task which for you is actually very difficult to perform and maybe for anybody else? And that is when you experience frustration. 
I have experienced that when I started taking singing lessons and my teacher told me to breathe with my diaphragm. That's easy, it's your natural breath, but actually very difficult to do, and it's a secret of the great singers. And it's similar to what happens when a boss comes into a meeting and tells you to think out of the box. Come on, give me your creative ideas, think out of the box, I want to hear that, I need innovation. Easy, simple, but actually very hard to do. You need to practice, you need to know how to get out of the box, where to go, and how to come back inside the box, because that's where we live. We actually live inside our boxes. So I want to ask these questions, I ask those questions to myself, and this presentation is a little journey through my answers. I hope that some of these will resonate with yours. So the first thing is to ask why. Why should we really go out of the box? Because inside the box we feel safe. We agree with everybody else. And when we go out, we risk our reputation. We work so hard for a lifetime to build it up. Why should we risk it? Is this something which is a luxury? that only a few people can do? Or is it really a necessity? So why? Think of our lives today. We are really part of a network. We are nodes in a network. We share information in real time. And we, in the end, all possess the same information. That's the end of it. And that is a scary thought. If we all possess the same information, what makes a difference between ourselves? Where does our dignity as human beings lie? It really depends on what we generate with that common shared information. So to think creatively, to go out of the box is not a luxury, it's a necessity for us and for our dignity as human beings. So which box are we talking about? We must have a clear definition so that we are really talking about something specific. It's not our mind. We cannot think out of our minds. It's a boundary within our minds, the boundary between what we know and what we haven't still or yet thought about. What is our mind? What is our knowledge structure? It's an emergent phenomenon out of a complex mechanism, which is the brain. We start with initial conditions, our genetic heritage. We have boundary conditions, the environment. We have indirect experience, years and years spent in school and university to learn what other people have thought, what other people have discovered, what other people have created. And then we have our own direct experience, our successes, our failures that really make what we are. All of this builds the ant hill within which we live, and we live very well in that. And whatever we think inside that ant hill, that box, we feel safe. Whatever is outside, it's invisible to us. We don't know what is outside. That is why it's so risky, because no nobody else knows. And so we are faced with something which is necessary to our dignity, but actually, it's very difficult to do. How do we go out of the box? How do we do that? What are the mechanisms? Do we need to wait for an apple to fall on our heads? Or are there some specific techniques? Well, reality is out there for us to perceive it. It's beautiful. You see these flowers. And we have a lot of ideas, which is our convergent information the dominant ideas. Whenever we need to think about an area, a focus area, we have ideas on how things should be. We have requirements, we have specifications. We know how things are because that's the way they always have been. But if we want to go out of the box, we need to add something more, a little spice, something which goes beyond the convergent information something wrong, something absurd, something which apparently is not relevant, something which takes us far. This is what we call divergent information. We need a little bit of that divergent information to cross the borders within our minds from what we know to what we haven't yet thought about. So this is the 
essential mechanism that uh, is necessary and it takes us to a place where we don't really know where to go. We are suspended. It's like the middle game in chess. Where do you go once you're out of the box? You have no preset direction. So it's really a potential situation that uh, brings us to the feeling that we should re immediately go back. This does not make any sense. Let's go back to safe place. Let's go back inside the box. That's a temptation that we need to resist. We need to value long thinking. Normally we talk about brilliant thinking, fast thinking, deep thinking, but here we're talking about something different. Long thinking. What does that mean? It's some thought that takes us far. It's as if you were reading poetry or listening to music. You don't judge the single notes. You don't judge the single words. It's the ensemble that gives you a feeling and takes you far. We must do the same thing with our concepts. We need to go far. And so we can use association of ideas, combination of ideas, extraction of principles and application of those principles to areas where they were never applied before. We need to be open-minded. We need to be fluent. Look for alternatives and not for the correct answer. Because when you think creatively, there's no single correct answer. There are many possible alternatives. And suppose now that we are lucky, we land up upon a new idea in our travel, in the exploration out of the box. What is the value of that? How do we assess the value of a new idea? It's very difficult if it's really new. Because you've never seen that before. Nobody else has seen, has seen that before. It's as if we landed on a new planet. Totally undiscovered territory. And it's difficult to understand the value of something new. First of all, because we don't feel entitled to be inventors. Who am I to be the generator of that new idea? And probably this has been thought about before. If it, this is correct, somebody else would have done it before me. These are all natural mechanisms with which we kill our own ideas. We have to resist that. We have to look for the match between the new idea and our initial drive, our initial focus. Or evaluate the idea per se for its own value and maybe see that that's something that solves another problem which was not yours. Serendipity happens all the time. We just need to have the eyes to see that, to notice the difference. Okay, but uh, we are social animals. We live in an environment, so to think out of the box, bring in new ideas, is going to challenge that environment. When is it a good idea to challenge everybody around you in your working environment? You have a boss. You don't really want to upset him or her. When is it a good idea to think out of the box? Well, first of all, if the environment punishes mistakes, you will never be really tempted to go out of the box. You will remain safely in a known environment. So if you want to stimulate an environment which is creative, you need to allow the, divergent, the existence of divergent information. You need to allow irrelevant information to come in. You have to mix and match different disciplines. You have to use metaphors in the organization. Only in that case, you will allow the environment to uh, be really prone to the generation of new ideas. So I want to end my, my talk. In order to get some more information about source, sources for concept creations, please have a look in the appendix of the provided ebook. For example, you could use props. A company wanted to develop new flavor, therefore they hired a consultant who filled the room with samples of fruits and various of perfumes. A good source for concept generation is the finding and solving of customers' problems. Therefore, a company will use all available, uh, available channels. They use information from warranty files to locate problems, investigate complaints from customers and ask salesperson, employers, manufacturing and so on persons. Another good source is brainstorming. 
brainstorming techniques have been around for so long, but they are widely misused. You have to mind the rule. Large quantity of ideas, defer, defer judgment and no snickering. Today social media are getting more and more important since they make giving feedback easier. All inputs result in a problem analysis procedure. The general approach is the following. Firstly, we need to determine the product activity category, which had already been done in the product innovation charter. Secondly, we need to identify heavy users, since, normally, since they normally have a better understanding of the product. A variation is to ask non-users, because you expect them to have a reason why they are not using a product. After collecting all this information, we need to sort and rank them. Therefore, it is useful to also consider the frequency of each occurrence. Gap analysis is a statistical technique with immense power under certain circumstances. The map of the market are used to determine how products vary. While the score may seem arbitrary, gap maps are often a good starting point. The attrib attributes in gap analysis should normally be differentiating and important. For example, the snack mac, which is taken from the provided ebook, suggests gaps which are marked with a dollar sign. They represent new product possibilities. You should know that the large number of snacks makes our gaps few and small. We have almost covered phase 1 and phase 2 now. But there is only one concept we want to introduce right now. Open innovation. As we could see, the process of new product development is quite complicated and hence expensive. That's why open innovation has become more popular. That means that companies are working together. A good example is the development of a software development kit. A good SDK software development kit will attract lots of developers who can write programs which are essential for a software platform. On the table you can compare some advantages and risks which are connected to open innovation.